Good evening. Welcome to Hardfire. I'm Ronald Wick, your host for the second part of the debate on the uh, events of September 11, 2001. My guests are Dylan Avery, who is the guiding light behind Loose Change, a film that purports to show that the attacks were an inside job, and his friend and associate, Jason Burmis. Their uh, third partner in this enterprise is uh, Corey Rowe, who is not with us tonight. And my third guest is Mark Roberts, who is a debunker. Mark believes that the film Loose Change gets it all wrong. Now, we're going to pick, off, uh, pick up from where we left off a week ago. Uh, no chairs were thrown. We're going to try to do better tonight. Uh, a problem that I think many people knew to the controversies surrounding 9-11 is this notion of a vast conspiracy originating at the very top levels of government. Um, in order to intimidate people, researchers, for example, the 200-man team at NIST, uh, the researchers at FEMA, the independent academics, the demolition experts, to get all these people to say things that they know to be untrue, you'd need extraordinary coercive muscle. Who provides this? I mean, <coughs> is this a, a shadow government within the government? Is this That's a, actually well? You, you know, it's it's funny you bring that up, uh, yeah. and I would just like to s say that I don't believe that it's really that hard to coerce people in government positions. But it was it was weird that you just said shadow government because I was just going through some AP footage this week, and a lot of people missed that report. Uh, about three days after September 11th, where they actually said that on September 11th, after the attacks had occurred, they had, they had actually activated the shadow government. I mean, that's that's mainstream Associated Press, you know, footage. And we have to be a little more specific. Well, the government again. came out. I mean, yeah. basically, what it was said in the report, and you can read it word for word if you want to go to aparchive.com and just uh, go into the search engine, shadow government. News, news. I mean, you can yeah, it was it was basically them saying that the the government had said that they activated the shadow government in light of the September 11th attacks in order to deal with this new terrorist threat. Now, I, I'm, but these people have names. In other words, well, they, they didn't name any names. That's that's ah. what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm not the one reporting it. But at the same time, you know, I would love to hear that. You know, it was Dick Cheney or Paul Wolfowitz or somebody like that. But I can't go on a limb and say that. But they're hardly the shadow government. They well, are the government. Well, I would say that you know people that hold these high positions. You know, Assistant Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Defense. Vice President, they've been in government for a long time, such as Cheney. I mean, you know, he's a Secretary of Defense, uh, you know, in the, uh, I believe it was the Reagan administration. I mean, these guys aren't new to the game. And I would contend that, you know, there are these other positions, these clandestine positions. I mean, for example, Porter Goss, who did a little stint as the head of the CIA, he's openly a clandestine CIA officer for a long time before he was a senator. So you see these guys in different roles. In, di in, in different administrations, but always prominent ones. And I, and I would I would contend that you know, it's likely that some of these people do make up part of the shadow government. And speaking in terms of NIST and FEMA and all the organizations that you that you mentioned, I don't believe that all of these people, you know, all of these experts that NIST consulted, all the people that FEMA consulted, I don't believe that any of these people are necessarily in on it, or that they have you know some kind of paycheck coming to them to. To are they spread suppressing what we feel. things that they know to be true? See, that's uh, the thing. That's the perfect thing about the NIST report is that the NIST report spends so much time talking about what happened when that plane hit that building, all the columns that were severed, you know, the heat of the fuel. It does a great job. But then when you get all the way to the end of the NIST report and they actually get to the point where the building collapses, they don't explain it. They say that the collapse initiation leads to global collapse. I mean, you can read it in this report. It says the, co the collapse uh, sequence initiation of South Tower, World Trade Center Building 2. And that basically, uh, the plane hit. Structural members were damaged. You know, fuel melted the fuel melted the steel. And then once a certain portion, I mean, I had the exact quote right here. Well, the key point is that the well, the key uh, point the is that the NIST was knocked off. If it, if it but hadn't no, been, but no, but no, the fireproofing was knocked off, and those four floors that were hit by the plane, NIST completely, <coughs> completely fails to account for what happens to the bottom 70 floors of the South Tower and the bottom yeah. 90 floors of the North Tower after collapse initiation mm -hmm. begins. If Mark that is has a read serious all 10,000 pages I'm sure of the Mark NIST has. report. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Mark has. He will, Ron's he will not go. exaggerating. I have actually read. Uh, some of it you skim, a lot of tables and things yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. the, this is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They're the ones who investigated the collapse of the Twin Towers, and they're currently investigating the collapse of Building 7, 47-story building that fell later that afternoon at Ground Zero. Um, 
there are a lot of misconceptions about what's in the report, uh, and I think that's partly in do, uh, due to the fact that people really haven't gotten in depth to it. They may be intimidated by that 10,000 pages. There's a very good frequently asked questions yeah, uh, that, that, that NIST pages. has up yeah. on, on the Internet. Uh, it answers, uh, attempts to at least address a lot of the concerns that, that conspiracy theorists have brought up over the years. Um, one really big one that, that really gets to me, um, and, and Dylan just mentioned it, was the idea that the fire in the Twin Towers melted the steel. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, at nowhere in the 10,000 no, right. in in the the pages. The scientists that worked on it, yes, that was the initial assumption that fuel melted it. Yeah. That fuel right. melted the but, steel. But, but it's, it's a misrepresentation that gets made, and you guys make it. You guys, I've, I've, as, as you know, I've seen a lot of your interviews and, and heard them. Um, I did a document called Least Change Creators Speak, but it's also at 911myths.com. Uh, which is uh, excerpts from their interviews, basically. Uh, what do they say that's not in the movie? Um, some of it's pretty stunning. Some of it's fairly mundane. Um, the idea, though, that, that, that these uh, fires melted the steel, you're still saying. You're still saying that in these interviews. So I just want to get your commitment that you'll at least knock that off. Well, I would say that, yeah, yeah. you know, I haven't said that in a long time. I usually say that the official version now is that it lost... Um, it lost its strength. It Thomas, lost the, yeah, Thomas yeah. Ager of MIT said it lost 50% of its strength, but that was still not enough. And to that account would have been due to uh, mm -hmm. fires of between 15 and 1800 degrees. But my main contention is that the fires could not have been 15 to 800, 1800 degrees within those impact zones because A, you have video of people alive in those. Okay, that's, you can Google that you right now. You have a woman you have trying to flag. World Trade you have people, it out. yeah, people, and then, and then you look at the, the firefighter tapes, and they were on that floor of the impact zone saying that they had two isolated pockets of fire. They could probably knock it down with a couple lines there in less than no five water. minutes. Well, 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 through the World Trade Center, you would definitely be able to bring up water. I, I want to try to take one point at a time. Um, that's, that's really disingenuous again. The, the idea that the firemen uh, had made it up to the fire floors where it, where it plane hit. It's true. Um, uh, one crew did make it up there, a fellow Keith captain Palmer. named Oreo Palmer, um, 78th floor, uh, took the elevator up to the 44th and then climbed the rest of the way, um, along with several other people. Uh, now, the 78th floor of the South Tower was the lowest point at which the, a plane struck. Uh, if you look at the photographs and video of where the fires were, there were a couple of floors above. In fact, the fires were so severe, just two stories above that, that there's molten material coming out of the northeast corner of the South Tower. Uh, 78th floor was also a sky lobby in the World Trade Center. Uh, not office space. It's a lot of marble. It's a lot of escalators, things like that. Open not spaces. Not a lot to burn. Not a lot to burn. Uh, heat goes up. We know that. The flames were roaring. Chief Palmer made that radio call saying that we can knock down the fire on the 78th floor with a couple of hoses, if they had had water, um, at 9.52. Uh, at that moment, there's a photo in the NIST report of molten material coming out of the South Tower just above where that is. And uh, there are also people in the elevators there. There were 16 people trapped in the 78th floor elevator right up until the building collapsed. The guy is calling down, uh, trying to get them out of the elevator. Um, so there were a lot of dead people there. Uh, there were also a lot of live people up there. Mm -hmm. And the idea that um, uh, these buildings were so large, that can happen. The heat is rising. These people are on the lower floors. You mentioned, uh, I don't know if you mentioned her name, Edna Cintron, mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, famously in a photo on the North Tower yeah. of the, where the hole that the plane made. Um, after that, the fires burnt out, burnt up. Uh, she was able to make it to that hole to get some fresh air. Uh, she didn't survive <laughs> that impact. Uh, but. That's where the cool air is coming in. Above, it is absolutely roaring. I've got photos with me. There's photos in my, in my loose change guide that are online. Uh, of right at those times, what's happening up above? And See, here's the fires problem, are absolutely though, with roaring. the controlled demolition thesis. There, there's a huge problem. And any time I talk to someone in a controlled demolition industry, they say the same thing. Look, you have this process that's happening quickly. Mike Newman of NIST outlined this to mm -hmm. me. He said, the trusses did not fail. That's, that's not the way to look at it. As the core beams are weakened, they're exerting a pull on the trusses. Now, eventually, the trusses pull the external beams. The whole thing gives way. You've got the global collapse. But that, what would test that theory? If you look at the pictures of the face of the building, you will see that it's bowing inwardly. 
the columns are bowing inwardly. They are being pulled by the trusses. First off, let me say that I I don't think that it would have been impossible for the World Trade Center, uh, especially the South Tower, which fell first, to tip over at that point of impact. In fact, if you watch the video, you don't really have, even have to slow it down. Well, Eager says well, it would have had to be knocked 100 feet off its well, center I, of gravity I would, I would disagree with that, and I would say well. that if you watch the, the initial collapse of that building, it leans over to the right, there's plenty of still photographs, the thing almost goes at a 45 degree angle, yet you don't have that top floor of uh, 30 or so stories falling to the ground, and you would expect that. No, I can but, but address, I, I, I can well, address hold on, that. Hold on. Yeah, I, before ahead. he addresses that, I would also like to address the molten metal point that he made, uh, mm -hmm. that the fires were so intense that molten metal, molten metal certainly does pour out of one concentrated section of the World Trade Center. It looks like Moments. aluminum. It's not aluminum. I, I, See, that's the problem. I, I, I know you were going to say aluminum, aluminum because I, yeah. I had seen your, your debate before yeah. with uh, Les Jameson, and I would contend that it is not aluminum. It makes its way down much far further, and that we have molten metal under the scene. It's but not only that, but molten mix. Well, it's not pure well, aluminum. The thing is that yeah. if, you, if you want to go with this mix theory, and yeah. I've heard this too, these are steel frame structures. Steel doesn't melt till somewhere around three thousand degrees, and you would think that well, the, the, well, degrees, well, well around yeah, there, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you know exactly. Yeah. You would think that the aluminum, if that was the only thing that was mol molten, when it actually hit, you know, these steel beams or steel parts, it would, it would end up solidifying again, unless these, these, these other beams, these steel beams, are almost molten or molten themselves. Well, steel, what about uh, alum the? well, aluminum melts at about half the temperature of steel, mm -hmm. about six sixty Celsius. Um, and so that's not, that's not quite true. Um, what you do see in that corner where the, where the material is dripping out of the building and flowing quite a ways down before, uh, uh, before it uh, sort of dissipates. Makes quite a ways down. It, sure, many floors. Um, I've held some of that in my hand, actually, after it solidified its aluminum. Um, well, I mean, can, how would you hold the molten metal that you could see at the World Trade Center on your hands? Because people collected these things because they were fairly expensive. But that's after the fact, had, Mark. I mean, you can't the, sell that. That's what's falling out of the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. Well, they, that's where they... The well, I'm not saying it wasn't at the World Trade Center right. site, but you can't say that that's the molten metal that's can't pouring out sure. of it. But what they had done is cooled in midair. Um, if you've ever been to a volcano... See, that was that the thing that upset that, me, though, because if you, you know, just like you were saying, it made it down many, many floors, and it didn't cool in midair. You could actually you see that actually stream see of molten we metal. Had, yeah, yeah, obviously, but, but it does get thinner. But eventually, it does. Well, I mean, there are 110-story buildings. But here's, here's the, the thing. You do see... In. You do, I mean, and here's a photo, again, Ron, here's a photo from, your, from yeah. your video. Again, that right the there, that, that's the Bowing in you're talking about the bottom. I don't disagree that this thing could have... Listen, I don't disagree that the thing could have tipped tipped over and at that impact point fallen. I don't Again, disagree with that, but I disagree with the fact that it was a free fall pancake collapse within its own footprint. There has yet to be a scientifically sound explanation for what happened to the bottom of the Twin Towers after the collapse initiated. Sure, well, period. If you look Why at you NIST, NIST 1.6, one right. the report NC Star 1.6, section 9.3.3, several paragraphs of what happened to the World Trade Center after the collapse initiated. They're only concerned with what caused the collapse to happen. After that, any, any structural engineer with any kind of, who's graduated from any kind of school can tell you in just a few minutes of calculations that that force that's a, that the top of the buildings are exerting, we're talking about 100 million pounds in the case of the North Tower, 200 million in the case of the South Tower, that uh, dropping several floors that the rest of the building simply can't hold that. I simply don't see. I don't see. No, I don't see how thirty floors can. No, I don't see how thirty floors can structurally destroy seventy. Well, I mean, that's, that's that's why we're problem. not engineers. That's why we don't. I would disagree buildings. because there once are. Once again, the point is that the there's World also Trade there's Center also math. The there's the conservation of energy. There, there's the conservation of momentum. Right. There are science laws that were shattered no, on the morning of 9/11. No, absolutely not. Yes, absolutely not. What you guys need to do? I mean, we're going to have to disagree on it because no, 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 no. We're going to you're going to have to do is get an engineer to write a paper that can be reviewed. That's how science is done. That's what NIST did. They have a 10,000 page paper. I feel like Stephen Jones's reviewed. work at BYU was very exceptional. Stephen and I Jones's had, and I work at BYU was the worst science I've ever seen by in department. my life. Nor That's was it, not true. It nor was not was rejected it, by nor his was department. Nor was it peer reviewed. It was rejected by his own par uh, department. Not, not everybody in his department and it got, and it agreed with it. It wasn't rejected it by his department. Eder said he that he doesn't understand the color of molten metal. I mean, you've got a guy who's 
specialist on everything. in cold fusion and eager is a we're, metallurgist, we're, and he's saying Stephen Jones is a whole other thing. Jones I think we'll have to doesn't doesn't sure, but I mean, the reason at. I would bring him up is that he does address the aluminum issue rather well. In fact, he does experiments with molten aluminum poured on steel beams, and they solidify. There's and Dr. that's my point. Paper he's he's on pouring them on cold I've, I've seen the, the debunking now, of his paper. What, I'm not what sure what that Dr. What you guys are contending is that the heat couldn't have gotten hot enough in the buildings to cause the the, the collapse, basically. Well, I would say that the, the heat in the buildings has has no way. The buildings themselves and the planes that hit them have no way to account for the molten metal that was found under all three sites okay. of the World Trade Center. Totally different issue. That's, that's not issue a different issue that to metal me. Cooked there for well, of course it's well, it did. That's so another thing. Well, How, well, where is the energy for this to remain let's so get hot? Let's back to the collapse because this is your contention. That well, my contention is that it could have that, fallen over. Was it Mark. blown up or not? I, I, it was, in my eyes, Mark. You know I believe this. You know this isn't some kind of like thing that I'm just saying to gain popularity. I know you believe it. I absolutely 110% believe it. And the controlled demolition was something I had to... What all the demolition experts get wrong? I mean, every single controlled demolition expert thinks that... Well, not all of them get it wrong, Ron. I Every mean, single one of them thinks instance, that Towers 1 and 2 were well, not brought down. I was going to bring up numbers. 7, but in, in, in a yeah. recent documentary on Dutch television, they went to a person who does controlled demolition for a living, and they had shown him... And what was his name? I, 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 it was in I'll Dutch. It was in Dutch. George Schneider. Schneider. Is it George Hugo Bachman. Is that, is I that just had no, an this email is, this from is actually, George Schneider. This is actually... Uh, yeah. But you know what I'm Joanko. referring oh, to. Oh, Joanko is the third, but they okay. all say the same thing. Towers 1 and 2 do not look anything like controlled demolition. Well, I don't know about that, but I'm, I'm talking about the guy that just saw Seven go down and said, obviously, that was a controlled demolition. Well, what they did, issue, though. I mean, yeah, Seven, but what they you know, did is they showed him a video not telling him that the building had been severely damaged and was on fire for seven hours. Well, they just wanted to see they what he would think of the symmetrical collapse, Mark. They don't even show the East Penthouse portion of it coming I, I know. Well, let's get back to the, the towers. Sure. What does NIST say was the actual mechanism of collapse? Here's something that I go down to Ground Zero on Saturdays. There's a group of people who, who protest out there. Mm -hmm. I go out there to give my, my, uh, my counter uh, facts out. Um, and what I always ask them is, uh, what does the official report say? Because they're out there vehemently denying that the official report about the collapse of the Twin Towers is true. Uh, not a single one of those people. I've asked maybe a dozen now. Uh, including a guy who leads the group who's been doing it for uh, four years, none of them have known the answer. None of them. And they're out there protesting and saying that, that it couldn't have happened the way the official report says it happened. Not a single one has known the answer. And I'll have some video up on the internet. So I just want to be sure that you guys are not, maybe don't have the wrong idea in your heads about what actually brought the towers down, uh, according to the official version. Not that you agree with it or not. Again, NIST is saying but no, I, wanna, I, w yeah. I would like to hear it from them, actually. Okay. Uh, but they well, they said it was a combination of, of both the structural the damage from the plane and the heat within. And then, and then the, it not being able to hold, you know, but the weight of the you're building. But missing the key component. But the, the, right. the, the key component was, was the not mechanism, knocked off. The, the buildings would not have what fallen. What was the mechanism of collapse? Physically, what happened just before this was going on? What, what made this Boeing in happen? Again, this is from your... I, I know the video, and uh, again, I don't contest that the thing could have fallen to its side. I don't. I mean, I, I think the top portion could have very well fallen from the damage. I mean, I honestly uh, okay, don't. So that's but, not my, so where, my point. Where, does, where, does where do I? Well, anyway, where, let me, I'll, I'll, what I'll do sure. is, I'll, is I'll just say, here's, here's what NIST actually says. The mechanism of collapse is that not that the big core columns got real hot, not that the exterior columns got uh, so hot that they, that they completely failed, although a lot were obviously knocked, the outer out, columns, correct. knocked out uh, by, the, uh, by the planes, uh, but that the floor trusses. The temperature and the ceilings got up to about 1,800 degrees, uh, according to the NIST models. In, in pockets. Uh, but, but aren't and, those NIST uh, models? Well, yes. where, is, where does the heat go? The heat goes up. That's, yeah. And, and the, tr the floor trusses that hold the I've floors I've looked up at those floor models, thin, Mark. Don't you, you're talking thin. about the, sog the sagging floors? Sure. All right, yeah, that's my problem, that they, they had these things uh, under intense heat for a long period of time, and they didn't even buckle. They, the they did sag. did not They fail. did sag. And they did in, sag, but what they did is they pulled in on the outer columns, and you can see it That happening. is the collapse mechanism. That's the, the trusses collapse mechanism. didn't Again, fail. Ron, they pulled I'm the outer columns in. I'm not saying that it couldn't in. have fallen over yeah. to its side. Again, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. No. I am saying there's an absolute possibility. And he's referring to the floor models, and I have looked at them. Yeah. And the NIST floor model, again, this is something they put intense heat on, 
for several more hours than the actual fires had been burning, correct? I think they did it for a little bit longer. I think it was like three for, hours or something like that. They did it for a little bit longer on intact, uh -huh. the actual and test when on you look at the, And when you look at the pictures, you don't have a collapsed floor zone. You have sagging. The sagging is there. That's all Absolutely. that needed to happen. Well, That's all that in order for a building to fall on its side and lose its structural strength, sure, to be completely eradicated to nothing but rubble and dust, I would disagree. No, no, well, here's, once, here's once the global contending. collapse begins, you, you have an effect But the, glo the this global collapse is a new term. This is not a, this is not a demolition term. No, this is a, not a no, it's not, term. not a demolition term. Well, it's, it's not a term, term at all that you've ever heard. Term. It's not an architectural it's a, term. Yeah, no, no, that's global not Global collapse? It is. If you look at the, the reports on When was the last global collapse of a building before the World Trade Center? Let's talk about the Cater Toy Factories in Singapore that came down, steel frame buildings came down, in most of them in less than an hour, just from fire, multi-story buildings, global but collapse. But I've seen those kind of things, frame, and they're red hot, and you can see the molten fire. metal pouring out from everywhere. From fire. Yeah, but that again, so that's that's disingenuous. You're, what what because you're doing is you're misrepresenting the reason that they came in. You said, "Oh, I can understand that the floors could sag. I can even understand that this enormous top of the building could start to 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 lean to over, tip like over it did. sure." And and what sure. did happen is, if, if this is the damaged portion of the top of the building. What a lot of people in the conspiracy side expect is that if that starts to tip over, that it should continue to tip all the way. Oh, absolutely. Jason it's mentioned, Jason mentioned a, 40, a 45 degree angle. Explain that tower, to me. Let me yeah. just, let me sure. just finish yeah. this. The South Tower got to a, a, a 23 degree angle, uh, not a 45 degree angle. What needs to happen in order for that to continue over is that it needs to have a really good fulcrum over here, right? This is, a, this is the leverage over here. But that, what you see in the videos is that the second it starts to tilt, this collapses here, and it all comes straight down. So you do see it continue to fall a little bit. It's arrested by the interior walls, and you've got, it's not a solid structure. It's made up of thousands of parts, none of which are designed to lean like that. They come apart. When I would happens. disagree with you, Mark. Okay, but the engineers all disagree with you guys. And that's not there true. Is not, the government engineers. Not Listen, a single investigator. This is a government agency. Not a single and, person and to go who's back, investigated this I, agrees with you. I just, I just want to say, you know, in the beginning you said, you know, what would there be the vested interest? How could they apply pressure? Yeah. You know, look at how pressure was applied to people like Richard Clark right after the 9-11 attacks to try to coincide this with Iraq. I mean, people... That's pretty resistant. But, well, I'm not saying he didn't, I mean, but I'm, no, I'm just saying there's no that people in upper positions have agendas. Yeah. And not everybody is Richard Clark. Not everybody has a public face. Can you name, you know, other than the people that have done this in NIST, it's not like you see somebody uh, from NIST on television or in Newsweek or in Time Magazine all the time. They want to keep their job. Well, well you, you, you they can you be directed. Said, you've actually in a said that manner. some people on a, on, a, on a much lower level, but one that's fairly uh, uh, close to me, ha have have received pressure um, sure. recently. And don't worry, I'll get to the apology. <laughs> uh, uh, this came out recently that um, you had said down at Ground Zero on the 9th of September. Uh, it's in the video that I, you guys, sure, uh, you guys sure, I saw put, it. I mean, put on the video. All what you're talking uh, about. Yeah. Um, that uh, you said, uh, talking about the firemen mm -hmm. um, and other people also, listen, people have to keep silent if they want to keep their government jobs, period. They do. The firefighters are paid off, meaning they're, they're paid but, off. B before you say that, but, I didn't just go off and say that. But see, Abby Scott had, 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 had said something to me. I mean, I'm trying to put it no, in no, context. No, absolutely. If you'll she let had me, said to me, would you think the firefighters are paid off? And prior to that, I was talking about Controlled Demolition Incorporated. And I do feel like Controlled Demolition Incorporated has a vested interest in keeping the government line. Do you have but any evidence that they did anything wrong? I mean, they do all the government contracts. Do you have any evidence that they've done anything wrong? I would say that Oklahoma City is enough evidence let, for let me. Let me ask you yeah. well, look, but if I could get, sure. if I could, yeah. this is kind of sure. important to me because it yeah. concerns the fire department of New York mm -hmm. who lost 343 people there. Jason is standing there where they lost those men. Um, you said, uh, you said a lot of times they address it, they fear for their lives, meaning they know something about the tower collapses, uh, maybe that there were bombs in there mm -hmm. um, and that they're uh, being told by somebody to to be quiet, or they're threatened in some way, or they feel they're threatened in some sure. way. Um, you guys did an interview uh, back in December of 2005 with a fireman at St. Mark's Church. He said, "There's no gag order. I can tell you whatever sure. I want when I'm out of uniform." Sure. Um, but you're talking about something a little more insidious. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you said we've had firefighters come up and say, "Don't call me. I love my family." Yeah. And then the person you're talking to says, "And that means they're being paid off." And you said, "It's so obvious." Okay, you did apologize for that. You said, I don't think the firefighters have paid and off. I don't. These guys are heroes. And, yeah, they absolutely and I appreciate are. appreciate you. Say, I know you believe that. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think anybody thinks anything different. They are, everyone says they're heroes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, but you said a really 
unusual thing in your apology. Um, you said, I'd like to apologize for the comment I made to one Abby Scott on September 9th. I made the mistake of saying that the firefighters were paid off. I did not mean this. Uh, I'm convinced some sort of Jedi mind trick was pulled on me, uh, even though you had repeated that, uh, that statement. Now, you said, I was discussing how if you have a government job and you want to keep it, a.k.a. Controlled Demolition Incorporated, you keep your mouth shut. It then moved on to the firefighters, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I hold them as heroes in the highest regard. I truly believe that they were threatened in the aftermath of the event that not only traumatized the country but still affects their lives deeply to these days. Many of these men have families and would do anything to keep them safe. Yeah. So who's doing the threatening? Now, I couldn't I, I tell you, but I, I just... Bar, sure. <laughs> well, I would just say this. fireman's bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a little comical. Well, I mean, hey, you know, Dylan contacted... I, I, I don't want to name the police officer's name, but, I mean, he threatened to, to call the cops on him if he ever contacted him again. He's like, I don't want to hear from you. I will call the police. Leave me alone. I don't have any desire to discuss it. I've talked to other people with the same reaction. But they're well, saying that to now, you. Fire yeah, yeah, personally to us. Yes. Personally, uh, personally to us. About, about being asked questions. Sure. Yes. But maybe, yeah. it's just that they don't, maybe it's just that they don't want to be bothered. Well, excuse then, me a moment. Well, why the lyricists are sure. frequently known to misrepresent statements made by firemen. Well, a that's why we tried Louis, to contact them. A guy them. named Louis Caccioli, who does not believe that bombs were used, is always quoted on conspiracy well, sites you know, as my, saying My good friend Alex Jones contacted Louis Caccioli, and he gave me a similar story to what happened to Louis us. Louis Caccioli well, I'm does just saying not he buy gave, this. Well, I'm just saying he gave We're a similar out story. Of time. I want to ask both of you guys quickly, what would falsify <coughs> your beliefs? What would it take? What would you need to change your mind about this? There's nothing. I've talked to so many rescue workers. I've mm. talked to people that crawled out of the Pentagon. I've talked to people that ran away from Building 7. I have talked to the people that were affected by 9-11. I've talked to the victims. I've talked to countless people. Countless. Anything that would falsify your beliefs? I got to tell you, um, maybe before I really started looking into the controlled demolition, but after you really take a look at 1, 2, and 7, and I feel that you spend the time there, there's no way around it. Now it's got to be an inside job. Now remember, there is not a single controlled demolition expert anywhere who, who would agree. It doesn't matter, Well, you know what, I would just, say, I would just say to demolition. people, you know, check our film out mm -hmm. and decide for yourself what you believe. Because, you know what? I didn't come to this over a day. I truly believe those buildings were brought down in controlled demolition, which would, to me, have to be inside involvement at least after the fact. On that note, we thank you for joining us. We Can I close on a quote, too? Yes, please. Um, Bill Doyle. Bill Doyle is a man who is the founder of the Coalition for 9-11 Families. The 9-11 Commission is probably the worst representation of the 9-11 families, or for that matter, the American public, because it is a sham. We have had tons of questions that we have asked them to ask, and they wouldn't do it. And a continuing cover-up is just beyond belief. Okay. Uh, again, a host should be neutral. I'm obviously not neutral. I hope I've been fair. Uh, again, check out 911myths.com. Please view Loose Change. View it alongside Mark's critique, a guide to Loose Change. We thank you. Hope to see you again. Yeah.